Our next talk is a very interesting one um, and delivered by a man who really probably knows a lot about cybersecurity. He, um, he used to head up cybersecurity for the entire Israeli army and we met with you on our, November, on our investor delegation back in March. It's a pleasure to have you here again. Thank you very much, Nimrod. Thank Thanks. in the morning that try to inspire you, I will try to scare you. Um, yeah, uh, and really try to shed some light on, on uh, a new epidemic, a global epidemic. It's called ransomware. If hasn't, someone hasn't heard that word or doesn't know what it means, welcome to Earth. Um, the first computer ransomware reported already back in 89, but then it was done with floppy disks that someone spread around the clinic in the US. Um, really, uh, modern age ransomware began around 2004, but recent years has really spread it up uh, to what they call biblical proportions. Um, and, and I'm gonna try to shed some light on that. Um, if we look at the, the trends, so really up to a few years ago, most ransomware was targeting common people, common PCs, encrypting your files and demanding money. And that was for relatively low amounts of money. Could be $100, $200, because if they wanted more, most people won't pay. If they keep it in relatively small amount, people do pay. Um, but lately, amounts are going higher and higher because there are new types of targets, and I'll, I'll talk most of the, of the time about that. Um, in 2016, almost 40% met ransomware directly. Um, I'm guessing that by the time we end 2017, it will be over 50% uh, of people, organizations will meet ransomware di directly. That's crazy. Um, so there's, these are really big numbers. And, and again, the money is, is growing higher. It goes up to even more than, than the numbers here. And, and I'll show you a few examples for that. Um, the accumulative cost uh, of ransomware. So 2017 is estimated to go beyond $5 billion uh, ransomware. Um, and you can see that the uh, acceleration of, of this is hundreds of percents each year. Um, and the average amount per ransom really doesn't tell the story uh, because there are very high demands these days. Um, this is really the first automated, fully automated cyber crime or even crime as, as a whole because no other form of crime lets you um, reach millions of potential victims with a click of a button at a very, very, very low risk. Almost everyone gets away with it. And also at a very low effort. Um, and I'll come to that at the end. It takes almost no effort to do that today. Um, so really that's a change of how crime evolves and, and how fast it can, and it can grow. Um, and really, if, if until like two, three years ago, most ransomware was just encrypting files on your computers, that was the common case, and it, it's harsh. And if you're, I don't know, um, law firm and all your data is now encrypted, you're in trouble. But recent years, because of recent technology trends, are pushing ransomware to new frontiers. Uh, our own urge to connect everything to be always connected, to have everything automated, to uh, replace human beings with smart machines, opens new opportunities for ransomware. Um, we're in London, I guess you've all, all heard of this uh, earlier this year. And, and in this case, the ransomware didn't even, uh, wasn't aiming to disrupt healthcare or medical services, but it did. Um, but there are many cases where ransomware aims to and does uh, disrupt medical services. The fact is that this one just was on a very, very large scale, so it made the, made the headlines, 
Many other attacks don't make the headlines. They do make the headlines in hacker forums, in uh, security uh, magazines, but not your uh, popular media. Um, but this one did, and if we go to a really other place, uh, Game of Thrones, thank God last season is over. Um, but this season had much more interest around it than the producers were aiming for because Game of Thrones was hacked, uh, the HBO actually. Um, episodes that weren't um, broadcast yet were stolen and then uh, ransomware was demanded so they, they don't do that. And later on uh, it was leaked that HBO offered uh, $250,000 uh, for the hackers to stop hacking them. Um, there are also rumors about much bigger amounts that, was, that were paid there. Um, and it wasn't the only thing. There are other movies, TV series that are being ransomware. Uh, it's a completely new line of area where they just steal the data and publish, threaten to publish it other, if, if the owner of the data doesn't pay. Um, Another example, maybe on your next uh, ski vacation, this hotel was actually hit three times with ransomware. Uh, they had the electric key locks for the doors. Uh, this system was hacked and guests were kept out of their rooms without being able to go in. And if you're a hotel manager and now your system is being owned by someone else, um, you pay. You just pay. So they paid three times before they decided to go back to old locks. <laughs> True story. Uh, another real reality, esports, gaming, there's a lot of money going there. Um, really, it's, it's billions. And people invest money and people earn money. And uh, so wherever the money goes, so does the ransomware. So there are ransomware events where uh, the attackers hijack uh, a player's, um, I would say, assets in the game. Um, there is another um, case where a poker site uh, was uh, DDoS for ransom. So as long as you don't pay, your website is down. Um, and, and, and really, that's everywhere. You cannot escape it. Uh, people go to gaming to escape from the real world but ransomware will chase them there. And if you think that gaming isn't serious enough, so this is about as serious as it gets, uh, first reported uh, event of a medical device being ransomware this March. It had to come and it came. Uh, this was a radiology device by um, Bayer, uh, but it's not the only one. There were um, Publications about Siemens medical devices full of vulnerabilities. Uh, healthcare industry, by the way, is the most attacked uh, industry uh, in the world by cyber for years, by far. People think it's the financial sector. No, healthcare systems are attacked more than anyone else. Um, one, because they are known for their lack of preparedness for cyber. Um, and two, because there's a lot of money there just a lot of money. Most of the time, patient data is the common target, but we're starting to see higher profile targets, medical devices, and, and it's only the beginning. Other things, teddy bears. No one today buys a simple teddy bear with just fur. Uh, it comes with a recorder and internet connection. It is linked to your email account, of course. Uh, so these teddy bears were also ransomware um, for, again, uh, publicizing private data, um, conversations of children and parents, voice messages from children to their friends, uh, this all linked to their email accounts, a lot of data uh, that was stored on the manufacturer of these teddy bears uh, servers. It was hacked, ransomware. Another example, uh, San Francisco public tra transportation was hacked and ransomed for a weekend. Um, so you can see that ransomware is reaching everywhere. It is 
much, much more than just encrypting your files. Everywhere that is somehow connected can be ransomware. And I think that this is yet only the beginning. There are much scarier things uh, in front of us. Before I go to that, I'll tell you that, well, Hugo asked me to send this presentation almost two weeks ago, and, and events are happening like daily. So about a week ago, the FDA recalled half a million pacemakers for fear of hacking. Um, half a million people now have to go to their clinics and get their pacemaker firmware updated um, to block a few vulnerabilities that some people found there. Uh, at least this time, they don't have to have it surgically removed and replaced, but still scary as it is. Um, so the possibility of hacking pacemakers and doing things anywhere from changing the pace to draining the batteries out is a very real possibility. And I want to sketch a scenario that I think we will start to see not too uh, far from us. Imagine your regular mall. Every mall is filled with uh, Wi-Fi hotspots. Um, everyone knows that uh, it's very easy to hack into a Wi-Fi hotspot. You don't have to be in the mall. You can be thousands of miles away. And since all those pacemakers are, of course, remotely connected devices, they have different frequencies that they uh, can connect with. So if I hack a Wi-Fi hotspot, I can now scan them all for pacemakers. And I can wait a day, two, a week, whatever. Uh, but once, here, once in a while, I will find someone with a pacemaker in the mall. And with this Wi-Fi hotspot, since it's, it is under my control, I can hack the pacemaker. And then I can send you a message that tells you you want to live, pay. Uh, I think that is a very real scenario that we will see because it's possible. And again, the risk to the attacker is none, really none. He can sit somewhere in Russia or in China, do it here in London. No one will come after him. Uh, the effort is really nothing. And it just pays off. And it's going to get worse because, as I said, we just want everything more and more connected, and we want everything more automated, and we're giving the attackers more and more opportunities every day. Everything can and will be uh, hacked and ransomed. Um, everything in our houses, in our cars, in our healthcare system, everything. It's just going to go there, and it is very, very easy. This is just one example. But everyone in this room can become a ransomware attacker in days if you only wanted to. Because these software, these attacking software, are available for free online. And they come with um, manuscripts on how to do it. So it is really, really quite easy. You don't have to be a technologist. You don't have to know how to write code to issue a ransomware attack. That's really crazy. This is the first type of crime where really you can be a complete amateur at zero risk, almost zero effort, and get money by crime. So I think we're in an era where this is just going to keep on being a part of our lives because I don't see any real global solution at hand. Um, and we have to learn how to cope with it. We have to understand that it's up to each and every one to take certain measures if we want to reduce the risk. And it, it's possible to reduce the risk, but we have to be aware of it. And we have to be aware that ransomware will hit us somewhere. Is it, if it's in our PCs, our smartphones, our manufacturing lines, our uh, car or whatever. And there are some products that can help you reduce the risk. There are some basic hygiene things that you can do for your cyber environment that can help you reduce the risk. But take them. Take them or pay. That's it for now. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Zohar, thank you very much for such an interesting 
insight and overview of what's going on in the world of ransomware. Um, 